Each of the special agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation must be ready and capable to meet any challenge. The security of our nation or the life of a loved one may depend upon him. The FBI built Hogan's Alley, right? It's a fake town, but it's populated by real people. Everything is in play, from the venues themselves to the people that are on the streets. She has to be able to take that all into account. You're going to have to make split-second decisions on whether to take someone else's life, or if you make a mistake, they can take your life. The training takes you to a certain point. Oh, hands out to a T. Oh. Hands out to a T when you have deadly force in your hands. There's a huge mental component in that that you can't train for and really no one can prepare you for. You just have to be in it. What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and on this episode of Challenge Accepted, I will be training at the FBI Academy in Quantico. I'm sure most of you are wondering, how is this even possible? About nine months ago, Garrett threw out the idea, what if we go to the FBI? Most of Garrett's ideas aren't that feasible. We cold called the FBI because yes, their phone number is listed front and center on their website. Somebody answered, we pitched them this idea, and they said, we'll get back to you. 12 weeks later, we got an email from the FBI Public Affairs Office, which said, hi, Michelle, your project is approved. What? So for the next week, I'll see what it really takes to become a special agent, and at the end of the training period, I will put my skills to the test in what is known as Hogan's Alley, a fake town populated by real actors where I will have to make split-second life or death decisions. Challenge accepted. Welcome to the FBI Academy. Thousands of people apply for these jobs. You are lucky enough to be sitting here right now. You will be evaluated 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Probably the number one reason people fail is they don't come here with the right mindset. It's a very challenging curriculum. There are gonna be great days, there are gonna be really awful days for you, but you have to have the positive mindset in order to get through those. If you would, please recite the honor code out loud. As a student of the FBI Academy, I devote myself to the pursuit of truth and knowledge. I subscribe to the highest standards of honesty, integrity, fidelity, and honorable behavior. I will not condone the actions of those who would use a dishonest means to attain these ethical goals. Once you get those badge and creds and you come see us and get your gun, your life is changed forever. Some of your friends now all of a sudden may not want to associate with you because now you're law enforcement. Your kids all of a sudden may not be invited to birthday parties, to play dates, because they know you have a gun in the house. It's a calling and you need to be willing to put forth that effort to be a special agent in the FBI. The physical fitness test is the first thing that agents need to pass in order to even come to the academy itself. And so I really, really want to pass this so that I feel like I deserve to be here for the rest of the video. So name is Jonathan Rowe. I'm an SSA in the physical training unit. You are going to do sit-ups, push-ups, pull-ups. There's pull-ups? There are pull-ups. No one said anything about pull-ups. Okay, fine. You're gonna go ahead and do your 300 meter sprint. In the 300 meter sprint, you're going to go ahead and do your mile and a half. Out of the events, you have to meet a minimum of 12 points. Your partner is gonna be uh, Mrs. Ward. This is gonna be really tough. It is super, super hot outside. It's been a minute since I've been in the humidity like this. It's gonna be interesting. The sit-ups, in order to get one point, you have to do between 35 and 36 in a one minute period. And there is no resting between the repetitions. If you rest, it's over. You have to tell me words of encouragement, Chuck. What? <laughs> <laughs> You've done this many times, right? Yes. Okay, okay. I haven't liked a single one of them. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right, begin. That's 30 seconds. Move those hands back up a bit. Michelle, there you go. Put them back up on your shoulder. Don't pull on your shirt. And time. 55 will be. I was trying to get 57. Nine points. Yay. The next event is going to be pull ups. We run the pull ups more as an assessment to see where you are. It doesn't go towards the total score. So if you lay a goose egg, don't worry about it. Lay a goose egg? <laughs> Zero. Oh. All right. I'm so bad at pull ups. I think you got at least two in you. Okay. Hold and pull. One. That's two. 
That's three. <laughs> no. Oh. Sorry. Your chin was right there at the bar. It didn't go over the bar. So. Oh, you're too. So, uh, we have strict protocol here. <laughs> Good? Oh yeah, coach. <laughs> Put me in, coach. <laughs> All right. Next event we're gonna do is the push-ups. So this is not timed. It's not timed, it's a continuous motion. So what uh, am I going for here? 19 to 21 push-ups. The second you stop moving, it no longer counts. So everybody going in that front leaning rest position. Ooh, the track's hot. Oh my goodness. Um I'm sorry. My hands are like okay. burning. I'm so, so let's sorry. <laughs> Can I go on the grass? Is that okay? Yeah, you can do it on the grass. Sorry, I bailed just, out of that. I that didn't... just proves how hot it is today. So. Okay, so let's get in that front leaning rest position. Drop your hips just a little bit and on you. One, two, three, four, and lower. Five. So the push up is, tends to be the one that people have a lot of problem with. It's not necessarily a question of them having the strength, it's not following the protocols. People won't come down low enough from the elbow through the shoulder, basically runs flat across. Down lower. 28. 29. 29. Four points. Good job. The reason I didn't count that last one, you dropped, you had to return to the position. So you would have had 30. That's all right. All right. So the next event is going to be the 300 meter sprint. The time you were looking for is between 60 and 62 seconds to get two points. You will stay in your lane the entire way. You've got the inside lane, so. Ah! so I'm nervous. No, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Ms. Right. Warden, you ready? You ready, Michelle? All right, on three, two, one, go! This is probably the hardest event that we put them through. This is the one she's worried about. She's ran a marathon before, but she's... It's a different form of cardio. Yeah, absolutely. How did I do? 52 seconds, seven points. Hold 10 seconds faster than you needed. Good job. That's good. <laughs> Good job. Oh my god, I can't remember the last time I went on a run. It definitely felt longer than it actually was. <laughs> We're gonna have to do that mile and a half soon. We're not gonna run a mile and a half today, okay? I just got information that we have a black flag condition. The Marine Corps base here monitors humidity and temperatures. Currently, it's not appropriate to do strenuous activities outdoors. We've gotta cut it right now, okay? And this is not something I can let you waver on. This is my call, okay? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm just disappointed because I feel like our audience is going to think that I cheated. No, or... I will say that Michelle did not cheat on this. <laughs> this was the Bureau's call and the Marine Corps Base at Quantico's call. You were above average based on the scores that you were showing. Between the sit-ups and the 300 meter sprint, you had 16 points and then three pull-ups. So you got 19 total points. I think you would have killed that mile and a half. Thank so, you. So Good job. When they told me about the black flag conditions and that I wouldn't be able to finish the test, I was really disappointed because I want to commit myself fully to everything that I do. Even though I got 19 points, which technically surpasses the 12 point minimum, I still didn't pass the test because in order to do so, you have to attempt all of the different events. My name is Bobby Chacon. I was an FBI special agent for 27 years. I was assigned to the New York City field office where I worked Jamaican drug gangs and Colombian cartels. I transitioned into becoming a part-time diver for the FBI, so I started working underwater. When I retired, I immediately went to work on a show called Criminal Minds, working with the actors and the director. I was a consultant for the writers. So tell me a bit about your experience at Quantico. What can I expect? There's a certain mental aspect to it. You can run and you can do all that stuff, but when you have deadly force in your hand, you have a weapon in your hand, there's a huge mental component in that that you can't train for and really no one can prepare you for. You just have to be in it. Firearms training is the largest block of instruction here at the FBI Academy. The weapon we issue is the Glock 19M, made just for the FBI. Fired over 120,000 rounds with no malfunctions. Every training session will begin with the cardinal safety rules. Treat all firearms as if they're 
are loaded. Keep your finger off the trigger until you intend to press it. Never point a firearm at anyone unless you're justified. How does FBI firearms training differ from military or police academy? So most of our operations are done very early in the morning. If you're going to arrest somebody, you can almost guarantee that they're home at like 5 a.m. So a lot of times it's dark. We're employing our weapons when there's not a lot of light. The larger difference in the training that we go through is we have the time and the luxury of being able to plan most of our operations before we arrest somebody. All right, so we turn the lights off. Normally on an operation, when you roll up, you have these kind of lights. It helps to identify us as law enforcement. You have people going around to the back of the house, to the side of the house, take some of those fears away from the neighbors and makes it a little safer for us. Yeah. So you want to try shooting? Okay. Okay, we got an empty weapon. Let's load it up. We're doing it in the dark. Yeah. You have to be able to do this kind of stuff in the dark, you know, with your eyes closed, oh that kind of thing. God. We've got our flashlight. We'll bring it into that supported position, backs of your hands together. And then we would say light out and we'll take a step to the left or right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if they're returning fire at you. They're starting to watch where the light is. Light on, illuminate the target. Give me two shots. Light off, move back out to four. Give me two more shots. There you go. Now I have weapons mounted light. You just push down on that little switch there. So you can illuminate the target. Oh. This is much easier, right? Because you've got two hands on the weapon. Nice. One of the other skills that we train is as soon as we clear the pistol, we're gonna rotate right here. That's actually a shooting position. Oh my God, this so close? we're gonna be this close, right? Oh. So if me and you are talking and you decide you're gonna do harm to me, I might have to shoot you from right here. So hand strike, back to your chest, draw, one, two, three, bang, bang, bang. It's so close so to shooting. me. It is close. I just feel like I'm gonna shoot myself on accident, like as I'm bringing, I don't know. You gotta hit and bring that back. Okay. Right, that's important. Okay, up close, are you ready? Yes. Fire. Two. There you go. And holster. That was really intense. Yeah, you get the concussion back from the target. Yeah. Hits you right in the chest. We shoot a lot of holes in paper, and we do that because we have to score, we have to evaluate performance, and that's how we do it. But what are we really trying to do? It's to shoot a human adversary. During this training, you're going to be put in positions where you have to make split-second decisions. The wrong one could cost an innocent person a life or it could cost you your life. And uh, that's a really heavy position to be in. Hi, I'm Supervisory Special Agent Ann Kolb. Today, we are here to do a judgmental shooting exercise. But before we do that, you need to know what the deadly force policy is. First, subject possesses a weapon or is attempting to gain access to a weapon under circumstances indicating an intention to use it against the agent or others. Two, the subject is armed and running to gain a tactical advantage of cover. Three, a subject with the capability of inflicting death or serious physical injury or otherwise incapacitating agents without a deadly weapon is demonstrating an intention to do so. Or four, the subject's attempting to escape from the vicinity of a violent confrontation in which the subject inflicted or attempted the infliction of death or serious physical injury. Well, I get to say, FBI, put your hands in the air. Yeah, you should, you better. <laughs> and it's really important to do it forcefully. Like, how do you say it? Like, FBI, put your hands up. Oh now, God, put oh. your hands up, let me see your hands. This man is wanted for an attempted kidnapping four days ago. You are now in the building where he works as a night custodian. Can you articulate what you did? Who the hell are you and what are you doing here? FBI, don't move. He did not comply with verbal requests. I don't care who you are. This is my film, and you're not authorized to be here. He already had a weapon drawn. It was a knife, and his other hand was visible, which is why I did not shoot it first. Didn't feel like he was going to kill us in that moment. Put put the weapon down and put your hands up. I didn't like that. I did not like that. I did not like that. It does get your heart rate up, doesn't it? Yeah. And you know he's not actually a threat. When did you draw your weapon? As he was running at us. Do you think you could have drawn earlier? 
Yes. So what's the benefit of drawing earlier? It might scare them more into not escalating. Yeah, it might be more persuasive, right? Don't let them talk. This isn't a conversation. Yeah. This is you giving commands. You have to be aggressive. If there's any kind of equivocation in your voice, the criminal know it. They are very adept at knowing weakness. This man is a janitor in the local TV station. You and your team have come to arrest him for a bank robbery in which he used a demand note but displayed no weapons. FBI, don't move. I don't know who you really are, but if you want some trouble, I can give you some... Pepper spray. Okay, I'm not gonna shoot, but I'm gonna do pepper spray. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Okay, wait. What? He just took your gun. He just took... Wait, I, I thought that was over. I thought I could say pepper spray. Well, can you explain why you did or didn't actually use deadly force? He didn't have a weapon. Okay. He was not armed. That guy looked like a fairly strong, big guy. He had speed coming at you, closing that distance. Would it fit under three, would it not? Yeah, I guess it does. I was just trying to be nice. I'm a person who likes to diffuse situations by talking. It's bizarre to be in scenarios with people who are in different mental states or don't want to comply or listen and have to use a weapon to make others safe. That just feels weird. This is Whitey Brown, who was wanted for bank fraud. He has no criminal history and is not known to carry a firearm. Other agents are behind the house. FBI, put your hands up. Don't move. Oh, oh hi. Uh, if you're looking for Whitey, he's right inside. I'm just a neighbor. Gotta go. Don't move. OK, I don't think I should have shot him. Wait, is he coming back? Oh my god. I'm going after him. We're running after him. <laughs> it's OK. Go ahead and holster. OK. I hate this so much. At this point, you were going to shoot at anything. You were primed to go. I wanted to throw that in there to see if you could process enough of the deadly force policy that you realize, yeah, he doesn't have a weapon. I have no reason to believe he has a weapon right now. We're preparing them for Hogan's Alley. The nightmare scenario for me as a legal instructor is I have a student who they're not confident on the deadly force policy and they hesitate. They get killed, they get shot, or they get someone else killed or shot. You need them to be able to make the decision split second. It's interesting because when you're in there looking at a screen, it still feels very high stakes. My heart rate went up, I was nervous. There was one scenario where I just froze. Right, that'll happen. It really changes your outlook on certain situations. You'll see a situation now on the news where an officer either took a shot or didn't take a shot, and you'll know what they dealt with. Yeah. And oftentimes, it's not so clear. That's why a lot of the scenarios are vague. If that person had had a gun and wanted to do that officer arm, and that officer hesitates, then the officer's dead. Welcome to TVOC. That's the Tactical Emergency Vehicle Operations Center. What we're going to have you do is drive a couple of the exercises that we have new agents go through. For the police academy training, we were in a parking lot and there were cones. This one is an actual driving course with obstructions built in, so I think it's going to be a bit more intense. All right, so this is our actual track, just over one mile long. We have a series of S-turns and blind hills. I just realized none of my mirrors are fixed. That's Should fine. I, we I don't need the, mirrors? Not for this. As a training vehicle, we keep all the mirrors tucked in to focus on the other things. <laughs> and put it in park. What happened? So that would be a pit maneuver. That is a technique that law enforcement uses in case you are in a pursuit and you need to stop a subject. Wait, is this why you took the mirrors away? We did. Oh my God! I thought that I had a cone <laughs> and that I broke the cone. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and start it back up, put it in drive. Do you we'll usually surprise agents with that? Never, no. That's an advanced thing that we do for the overseas. What the heck, dude? Scared the shit. Oh my God. Your hands are on the wheel, but you have actually no control of that car. It's pretty scary. It is. I love watching the pit maneuver done on these helicopter cams. When they have the space to do it properly, it works every time. Hi, my name is Ryan Bell. I'm an instructor hey. here at TVOC. This is simulating a panic situation. So you're going down the road, something happens in front of you. You have to steer around it. So you're going to be launching from down where that car is. Launching? We call it launching. So you're going to start your drive <laughs> okay. from there. We have two different ones. We have ABS Whoa. or analog braking system. So you're going to get up to about 50 miles an hour. Engage ABS aggressively and then steer around those cones. One of those is going to go red. So you need to go to the green lane. <laughs> Normally you're supposed to go to the green. You went the wrong way there. Oh, yeah. All right, Mr. Benedict, you want to set up for lane change? Lane change is going to be almost opposite. Though. You're going to just avoid going to the brakes. Lift off the gas, smoothly steer to the green lane. Michelle, if you're all set, 50 miles an hour, go for green. 
Giddy up. Oh my god. Oh my god, I hate this. There's 25. There's your speed, level off, eyes are up. Don't get the brakes yet. Way early to the brakes. Full sorry, stop, sorry. full stop, full stop. Go ahead and get back and launch position, set up again. Wait for those lights to change, then go to the brakes. All right. All right. I can do it. this. 50 Here we miles go. per hour. Oh my freaking. We haven't had any rollovers yet. Shut up. Good. Way to keep those eyes up. All right, nicely done. Let's take it on out. Thank you, I did not breathe that entire time. You may want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we've decided we can't get the car stopped in time because we just don't have enough room between us and the vehicle in front okay. of us. Now we're just gonna have nice smooth steering into another safe lane of travel. Okay. These split second decisions you'll have to make are freaking crazy. You got this. I got this. Woo! Good. Just like that. Nice job. Like a pro. Nice job. You may have a future in the FBI. Oh my god. Ooh, 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 ooh. There's some tone damage. <laughs> now we're out with what we call the stress obstacle range. Or stress the, obstacle the range? The stress obstacle range. You'll notice we brought a truck in. We're going to have you start inside the vehicle. You'll engage those targets and then you'll come outside the vehicle and run the obstacle course. We do this so that we get your heart rate up and gets a little stress going. I've never done something like this while shooting a live gun. You'll be fine. This is it's crazy. Fine. <laughs> All right, three on each one. Ready and fire. <laughs> Slow down a little bit. Get your hits. Focus on that front sight. There you go. There you go. Finger off the trigger, step out, holster, and let's head to the next one. As you move through your firearms training, it gets more physical. You're moving, you're looking at cover, and your heart's racing. You may be in a scenario where you're shooting and you're running from one car to another, and your heart's gonna be racing. So if you don't have that base fitness level, if you're not in good shape, your use of that firearm is gonna be diminished. That front sight, slack out and a good press. Nice, go to the next one. There you go, now let's go up to the front one. Dang. Put that orange dot right on there. Reload, we'll get behind cover when you reload, right? Drop the slide, now we'll stem back out. There we go, nice good press, nice and easy. There you go. One more plate. You got this. Raise it up. So much harder when you have your heart rate up. Those are six inch plates. They're a lot harder to hit yes. than uh, the bigger torsos. And I'm just trying to imagine people moving. Yeah, at least these targets are stationary. Yeah. <laughs> right? They're not shooting back at you. My name's Sam Benson. I'm a supervisory special agent here at the Academy. We're going to work on an action versus reaction drill. You're going to be up on your gun, prepared to take a shot if necessary, and the other guy is going to have a gun in his hand just sitting at his side. You are going to be giving him commands, telling him, FBI, don't move. When I give him a thumbs up, he is going to initiate the gunfight, and I want you to engage him with one round as fast as you possibly can. If you don't take the shot when it's necessary, you're increasing the risk to yourself and potentially to other people. Does it hurt to get hit? Do you want me to tell you the truth? Yeah. Yes, it hurts. Stand and fight. I don't want to do this. Okay, I just feel like I'm going to lose. I'm going against a literal FBI agent. You'll be fine. He's not that good. Not go that ahead. good. Come up to the, there you go. I don't good. Like, so Present the weapon all the way out, finger off the trigger. At Wait. his first movement, you engage the target. Oh God, this feels so weird. Right, ready? Start giving commands. FBI, put your gun down. Put it down. Put it down now. Stay on your gun. Stay on your gun. Good. Good. Go ahead and holster. I didn't even hit him. You got hit, where'd you get hit? I'm right here. In the leg? Yeah. The action-reaction exercise really brought the shoot-don't-shoot scenario to life for me in a new way. 
It is scary when there is a real life human being in front of you and you have to decide, do I pull this trigger or do I not? The exercise really taught me that when someone has a weapon in their hands, they are the ones in control if I don't shoot first or if I don't de-escalate them as quickly as possible. Did you want to do it again? No. You sure? I'll do it with you. Oh. The only secret is don't move and go to the trigger. You're still not gonna win, but your first round's at least gonna be accurate. Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Go ahead and pull your weapon. It feels so awkward, you know what I mean? Pointing a gun at someone else. I know, it feels awkward. It's not natural to shoot other human beings. Oh. Keep your finger off the trigger, give her commands. Get on the ground, FBI, FBI. Better, did you get hit? Yeah. Fine. Good, okay. did you get hit? I don't think so. What I learned from the second round is, no matter who's holding the gun, they can pose a threat. Even though she wasn't professionally trained, she was still able to get a shot off first. She was faster than you were, but she was inaccurate with her round. You were accurate with yours. That's a win for us. The fighting mindset is everything. Understanding that, yes, it's going to hurt. I'm gonna make her move and flinch rather than me move and flinch. This is all about getting someone to comply with your commands, right? Most people don't wanna to go to jail and won't go voluntarily. If they don't have a weapon or if they don't pose a deadly threat to you, you can't use deadly force against them. So you have to use less than lethal force. We're going to do an active takedown of an individual. We like to cuff people face down on the ground. However, a lot of times when we're doing that, they tend to cover up their arms. If I'm just pulling on this arm, I'm never gonna get that out. I've got my knee. I put it as small as his back. I take my hands down, pull it up and expose. Now, I exert some pressure on his chin. Arms out like a T, sir. Arms out like a T. I want to make it so he wants to get his arms out to alleviate pressure. One person tends to usually work the upper body, one person tends to usually work the lower body. We're going to have you working the upper body aspect of it. Mr. Warden is going to issue commands to Mr. Kemp. The person will not be armed. I will not tell you what level of compliance he will be. So he might go easy, he might go hard. All right, make it happen, guys. FBI arrest warrant. Hands in the air. Come with us today. Okay. You guys gonna shoot? Sure. I'm gonna take a minute. Go. Go, 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 you go hide. Nope. What is this? What are you guys doing? Get off of me! Remember, Michelle, talk to your partner. That knee in his back. There you go, good. Put hands out to a T. Hands out to a T. And you can control of that chin Hands. with your right hand, remember? That way we keep the pressure on. Remember, we gotta pin that shoulder down a bit better, Michelle. Otherwise, you can do it. But go back to work, get back to work. There you go. Get into that position. Hands out to a T. All right, now grab his wrist, pin that shoulder. Shut up. Put your right hand to the small of your back. Now go ahead and get him cuffed up. Okay, I have one cuff on. I'm doing the second one now. Okay, it's on. Okay, relax guys, relax. I lost my shoe. <laughs> well, you stayed in the fight, <laughs> right? You stayed in the fight, because guess what, the shoe's not important. Who is it who told him to shut up? Was he? That was me. Don't get baited into a conversation with him. You should be talking to your partner about what's going on, getting him into position. Think about your surroundings and what people are doing. A lot of people are recording, okay? So we have to be a level of professionalism at all times. Do you think I have what it takes to be an FBI agent? One of the hallmarks of being an FBI agent is being able to perform well under extreme physical stress. The training takes you to a certain point, but really the proof is Hogan's Alley. Until you go through it, you don't know what it feels like. Hogan's Alley is not a law enforcement friendly area. The bank gets robbed seven times a week. It's a fake town, like the Hollywood set, but it's populated by real people. It forces you to draw from all of your training, your legal, your tactical, like even your firearms training. Your body's gonna respond to this stress. Your heart rate is gonna elevate. You're gonna start breathing really, really hard. At any point, you've gotta be prepared to deal deadly force. Okay, so what happens now? 
<laughs> I don't like this. I don't like your surprises. I so, don't like anything about this. All right, so 101st Street, there's a woman there named Liz Gursky. We got a tip that Jen Mendoza, person we have a warrant for for wire fraud, has been staying with Liz Gursky. The location is a third party residence, which means we just can't go in and arrest the person. So Michelle needs to ask questions of the homeowner, establish the appropriate authority for her to be able to go in and actually apprehend the subject. When you are out here, everything is in play. People at that house, people down the street, they're all in play. All right, you guys okay. ready? All right, let's no. go deliver some justice. <laughs> Elizabeth, my name is Michelle Carre, and we're with the FBI. Mind if we chat for a minute? I haven't done anything wrong. I don't know why the FBI Oh, you're is totally on the fine. Like you're totally fine. Okay. You're totally fine. We're looking for someone named Jen Mendoza. Why? We have a warrant for her arrest. Um, Jennifer rents a room from me. She works like late, so she's probably sleeping. But she's home right now. Um, I don't know for sure. I mean, she probably is. She's usually home around this time, but I don't know. Like, is it okay if we come inside and take a look and maybe say hi to her? I guess. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Jen. I'm Special Agent Chris Forge with the FBI. We have a warrant for your arrest. I need you to keep your hands where I can see them. Go ahead, stand up for me, please. Keep your hands where we can see them, please. In the first scenario, even though I knew that we were just going to simply arrest someone, I was very nervous about what may be around every corner. Could there be bad intentioned people waiting for us outside? Of so Michelle, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and walk in front of us. Just ask her if she wouldn't mind stepping aside. Liz, would you mind stepping aside and keeping your hands where I can Liz, see them? Liz, what, what is this about? Please take your hands out of your pockets so I can see them. Thank you so much. We just gotta get to the car. Ma'am, go ahead, step this way. Better do a harassment right. like this. Everything's okay. Please keep your voice down. Please keep your voice down. Keep your voice down, sir. Never show up. Start harassing people. Keep your distance, sir. Keep your distance. 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 Keep Oh God, my heart was racing. And that was like the most easy version where someone's very compliant. I've never really thought about how when you arrest someone, you have to deal with everyone yelling at you or judging you or whatever. I was so hyper aware of like, is someone gonna pull out a gun? So if just for a brief moment you went to the gun, but then you realize you're like, all right, there's nothing that's justifying that action. Being scared doesn't give you the right to shoot somebody. <laughs> I have to be able to articulate those kinds of things. All right, are you ready? All right, let's walk down here. I think we're racing weather here. We're gonna go talk to a guy who witnessed a bank robbery yesterday. His name is Matt Clements. He lives right there at 102. We're just gonna go up there and do what? Have a Ask conversation. Questions. Yeah. The hardest part in teaching some of these new agents is telling them that it's just a conversation. That's all it is. If you see something or hear something that changes your priorities, then that becomes more important. In this one, I'm gonna suggest that I be the lead interviewer, right? So you can take notes and you just kind of keep your eyes peeled. Hey, good afternoon. Mr. Clements? Yes. Hey, my name is Chris Forbes. I'm a special agent with the FBI. This oh. is my partner, Michelle Carr. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. We're following up with you regarding the bank robbery yesterday. We understand you were a witness to it, and we just wanted oh, to get yeah. some information yeah. from you. Yeah, yeah. No, no problem. So it was about like 3, 30 p.m. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Jackson, no, it's okay. My uh, he gave him a note. I don't know what it said. You made a quick exit, and then um, hey, hey, hey. kind of scuffle. They just having an argument. So, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Sorry, it's a little distracting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I think we should interview. Oh, hey, hey, hey. All right. Hold on, go ahead. Go ahead, move down. All right, go ahead. I'll keep cover on him. All right. All right, go ahead, holster. A lot of go, how to feel? 
Oh God. I knew you were about to do something crazy because I knew it wouldn't be as simple as I didn't do anything. let's go find information. No. I didn't do anything. Oh my God, when he got out of the car and pulled out the hammer, I just felt my heart skip a beat. And I literally heard Ann saying he's an aggressor looking like he's going to hurt or kill someone else. And I was like, that's it. You actually did very, very well. You take that shot even though there's some distance because if he makes one good shot with that hammer, it could kill her. So I have to take action in order to save her life. Any questions for me? How do you do this? I loved being an FBI agent because the FBI is a group of highly trained and highly intelligent men and women who are dedicated to upholding the Constitution and protecting people. And working with people that are dedicated in that pursuit and aren't in it for the money or the glory or the fame, it's a special group of people. If you enjoyed this episode of Challenge Accepted, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below with what challenge you want to see me take on next. And if you're new here, please subscribe. We are constantly upping the game and taking on new challenges all the time. And your support means the world and allows us to keep on making badass content like this. Thank you so much to the FBI for allowing me to come to Quantico and be the first YouTuber to experience something like this. To anyone who has served in the FBI, you are a badass and thank you so much for your service. If you're interested in learning more about the FBI or, I don't know, a potential new career, be sure to check out their links below. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day. Bye!